In today's episode of the podcast, we're going to talk about whether or not the emotional support chicken is all it's cracked up to be. Hello, 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 and welcome to the Wool Needles Hands Knitting Podcast. My name is Taylor and I will be your host. I'm really excited for this episode today, not because it's jam-packed with lots of new and interesting content or that I have all kinds of new projects to share with you, but because I'm actually knitting the emotional support chicken and I have been waiting to share more about that with you guys. So today is going to be a fun episode. I do want to update you on a few other things as well that I've been working on but I'm gonna be real honest with you and tell you that I'm most excited to talk about the emotional support chicken. If you don't know what that is, you will by the end of this episode. We'll talk more about it in just a minute. But before we get into any of that, I do have a few announcements I wanna make. I wanna take a minute to encourage you to check out the Wool Needles Hands website at woolneedleshands.com and sign up for the Wool Needles Hands newsletter. I send out a monthly newsletter, kind of like a monthly wrap up of what I've been up to, nothing crazy in depth, but some additional thoughts and insight into some things that I've been working on plus I am going to be putting um, a pattern testing call out and I'm going to be doing it through the newsletter and I'll talk more about that later but definitely sign up for the wool needles hands newsletter to just get a little bit more from me each month in your inbox and as many of you know I am the dyer of fiber for the people yarn and I had a pre-order shop update to to three weeks ago now, and all of those orders are going to be out by the end of this week, and I'm gearing up for my next shop update, which is going to be coming in two and a half weeks from now. The important thing though is to sign up for the Fiber for the People newsletter. I talk about all future updates, I share inspiration, what's going to be coming in those updates, yarn-based information, all of that via newsletter only. I don't share that information on Instagram. If you want to know about the shop updates for Fiber for the People, you're going to need to be a subscriber to the newsletter. Definitely head over to the newsletter to subscribe so you can be in the loop about the next upcoming update because it's going to be gorgeous and it's going to be on the Born, Shorn, and Dyed 100% Nevada Born and Raised Merino Rambouillet yarn and I'm really excited about it. So be in the loop, stay in the loop, fiber for the people. Thank you so much. I so appreciate your support. Now, enough with all of that. Let's go ahead and dive into the episode proper. Okay, so I'm considering this part of the episode proper, you guys, this tea, I can't put this down. Now, I haven't talked about like the tea that I'm drinking in quite a while. It's not something that I add to the episodes typically now. And that's just to kind of keep things moving along. But I'm going to tell you about this because it is delicious. I don't usually hold the tea in my hand for this long um, because I'm afraid that I'm going to like tilt it like this and have it spill. If you've been a longtime viewer of the podcast, you probably had those moments where I'm holding the tea and you're like, when is it going to spill? I can see it starting to do this. I'm fortunately it hasn't spilled while I'm filming an episode. However, if you can tell by looking at this page of my notes here, before I started filming this episode, I spilt a lot of tea. So I don't know, my luck might be running out. Let's hope not. But the tea that I have here is absolutely delicious. And it was sent to me by a viewer. I I picked it up in from my post office box a few days back and the viewer, her name is Amy, and that's as much as I'll say, she sent this to me and a nice message. It says, hi, Taylor, I just wanted to send you a little treat to say thank you for providing such valuable and entertaining content. Enjoy. And it is delicious, but most importantly, it absolutely warms my heart and brightens my day and means so very much that somebody would take the time um, and think about me and send me something like this. This is so Cool, I love it. So this is what I have in my cup right now. It's Market Spice Tea and established in 1911. And it's this delicious cinnamon orange decaffeinated tea. And it has like the public market center photo on it from Seattle. And it says, what does it say about it? Oh, there we are. Originating in Seattle's historic Pike Place Market, this delightful tea is part of a collection that has won the hearts of tea lovers the world over. So cool. So I had, and you know, it comes in these like, it's tea bags that don't, like you can see, do you see how like juicy that is? Hold on. They're really like really rich and concentrated with that orange and cinnamon flavor. 
And holy moly, you guys, it is absolutely delicious. It's not sweetened or anything like that. It's just really beautifully flavored. And so that's what I have in my mug today. And it is delicious. So thank you so much, Amy, for sending this to me. This means more than you could possibly know. And I love it. And it's absolutely delicious. I steeped it for a while. The tea bag is still in there. Don't give me, but I put a little bit of milk in there and it's really exceptional. It's really, really delicious. And I'm drinking it in my Endor Ewoks coffee mug. I mean, what? Life is good. Let's get into things, guys. I know that was kind of a long intro, but I want to get into it. And I want to start with my socks for Brandon. Not because I made a ton of progress, but because it's just something I'm working on. And I figure I may as well keep you updated. There's not a lot going on here that's any different from what you saw last time. But what the heck, let's just show it off, okay? These are my socks that I am knitting for Brandon. My shadow wrap heel in all of its glory. What? Okay, I don't know what's going on with my camera, but for whatever reason, this pillow is causing a problem. I'm gonna, let's get this blanket out of here. Sometimes the camera will pick up like a face somewhere and you know, where there is none. And it was doing it over there for some reason. Okay, back to the socks. Gosh, this episode is just one for the record books. So here we are, stripy socks for Brandon. I'm making progress. Progress is important. Um, not a ton. I have more progress on this one than I do on this one. I knit some of these, or I knit on these a little bit on my son's field trip last week. We took a field trip out to Lake Mead and we rode a bus to get there and I was a chaperone because um, I'm room parent for his class and I'm, I'm a chaperone. Um, it was a lot of fun, but I was sitting on the bus with a few of the kids and we're all chit chatting and I pull up my socks and I start working on my socks on the bus and they thought it was the coolest thing. Hey mom. Yeah, so it was fun kind of, you know, knitting on these in the bus with the students because they thought that it was really cool that I was making socks like kind of blew their mind a little bit. So that's the socks. I'm making steady progress, but I've had a lot of other things that I've been working on. Um, for the record, these are just a plain vanilla sock using kind of my basic recipe for vanilla socks that I got from a nitty article called Socks 101. I talk about this all the time. I'm linking to it down below in the description box if you wanna know where I get my formula for vanilla socks. But other than that, the yarn I'm using to create these is Patton's Croy Sock Yarn. I will also link down to that below. Everything that I mention, guys, for the record, if it's something that I mention, ought to be linked down below. If it is not linked down below, it's probably an oversight on my part. And you can just send me a simple comment saying, hey, like, can you please link this? And I'll link it down below for you. But if you need to know what these things are, project bags, all of that, this is the Magner, baby Magner prog project bag, which I absolutely love. All of these things are linked down below. Okay. The next thing I want to share with you is something that I would never have imagined myself feeling inclined to knit. Well, I don't know what happened to me over the course of the last five days, but when my Franken sweater pattern went live um, and it was brought to my attention that it was ranking on the hot right now, like top 10 over on Ravelry, um, which was really exciting. I, we were teasing over on the Patreon chat thread about how it was ranking just underneath this emotional support chicken pattern. And I'd never heard of this before in my life. I thought it was a hilarious name and an adorable chicken. And then we kind of started talking about it over on this chat thread. And then people were like, I kind of want to knit an emotional support chicken. And then I was, you know, it, it just kind of became this thing that all of a sudden I realized that I want to knit an emotional support chicken. Now, if you're not familiar with this pattern, I don't know how serious um, like emotional support chicken is. Like, I don't know if this is a thing that people actually lean on in moments of like stress and trauma, or if it's more just kind of like a cheeky nod to like a comforting stuffy. I don't know. I just think that the name is adorable and hilarious and I love it. And I think the chicken's really cute too. I'll pop up a picture here so you can see like the pattern page on Ravelry, but it's one of the top 10 patterns in the hot right now on Ravelry consistently, at least it's been for a while. Um, and it's adorable. And then when I started working on it and mentioned to my boys, 
that I was going to be knitting a chicken, which they keep calling a turkey, they became so excited. My oldest, who's just so, he has such a soft place in his heart for stuffies. He's so excited for me to finish it so that he can introduce it to his um, main squeeze, Rupert. And I just think it's the most precious thing ever. So yeah, you guys, I started an emotional support chicken. And I want to share with you what I have so far of said chicken. Because I, jeez Louise, this is just a nightmare. This, see, this is whatever. I want to share with you what I have because I'm really excited. So my yarn is kind of damp because some of the tea that I spilt before I started filming got on my yarn. Oh, no, no, don't fall yarn. Oh, of course it fell to the floor. Hold on. Just listen. This isn't a professional podcast. Hold on. Okay. Yeah. See, we're coming back. Here we are. If you came here to watch like professionalism at its peak, it's, no, it might not be the episode. All right. But we have a, an emotional support chicken for you. So that's that. Now, let me get all my little things. Let me get all my ducks in a row. It's a poultry joke. You guys, this is my emotional support chicken skin. Look at it. How stinking cute is this? I can't even believe I made this. Now, when you make this, this is like, look, ta-da! It's been, what is it called? Spatchcocked. Is that spatchcocked? I think it's a spatchcocked chicken. How cool is that? So I'm going to tell you right now that this has been a lovely process. The pattern for this I don't know if it's well written or if it's easy to read or all of that. I just know that I'm able to follow it. Um, I feel like it has some formatting issues that make it difficult to follow on a digital like device, like on a device. Um, but it's the pattern because I know and the only reason I'm bringing this up is because some people were making comments that this is called the emotional support chicken because you need an emotional support chicken to get through the pattern. I don't think it's anything like that. I think there are some like formatting issues. There's some wording that I think could be clarified, but I think it's a fantastic pattern. And if you have experience knitting um, any from any other pattern, if you have any pattern experience under your belt, you're going to get through this just fine. And the pattern is fine just as it is. And it produces this really adorable chicken as far as I have right here and from what I've seen. And I think that's amazing. I don't know how it hasn't, I haven't been able to wrap my head around completely how somebody can visualize or even sketch out a chicken, like maybe on paper, and then come up with some series of wrap and turns that you have to do to get all of these shapes. I just, it, it boggles the mind, okay? So this is what I have of my emotional support chicken. And I am just so tickled by this whole thing. It is adorable. Now, um, the way that this works is you start by knitting and this is knit. Okay. I know that I'm only saying that because a lot of these animals that you see tend to be crocheted, but you start by knitting these tail feathers that you see down here. Um, this, this is one right here. And then this is one right here. These two little sections, you knit those first and then you seam them together to kind of connect them using with this little center seam. Now you can sew these together or you can crochet them together. And I decided I wanted to crochet them together because it just seemed easier. Now it's not the cleanest, you know, but it works, right? Like, I don't think this is supposed to look absolutely pristine, but it works. And then you add, you pick up stitches along this area right here, you pick up stitches that go all the way across and you start working up this part of the chicken. Shaping and wrap and turns and shaping and decreases. And then you create this little head. How cute is that? And then you change colors and then you create the beak. It's, it's such a nice process. I started this a night and a half ago. I just got like, I just got the whim. I had the yarn. This is my leftover yarn for my stripe pipe. So this is what I had left over for my stripe pipe pullover. And I figure it's perfect chicken colors. I mean, come on, that, that, if that doesn't say chicken, how cute. So I grabbed it a night and a half ago, sat down while we were watching TV and I started working up the tail feathers with lots of little wrap and turns and short rows. And I loved the process. Before you know it, I had two tail feather sections and I was ready to steam them up. And the rest of it just kind of started pouring forth from my creative loins until I had this chicken. 
and I'm so happy with it. And I've enjoyed the process of making this chicken so thoroughly that it kind of causes me to think back like on all of my previous statements where I've said it's just not my thing to kind of be like, you know, don't, don't knock something until you try it because this has been so enjoyable and I love it. I love it so much and I love this. I mean, that is a doll garn chicken, folks. Go for it, okay? I think it's beginner friendly, especially great for kind of getting your feet wet with short rows because you're gonna be doing a lot of short rows to shape a lot of this, changing colors. It's awesome, I love it so much. It's garter stitch, it's so squishy. I don't think you can really see the squish factor here, but ooh, it's so squishy. Okay, I wanted to share a little bit about the yarn that I'm using here. Um, oh, hold on, first, this is my, it's unrecognizable out of context, but this is my waddle. That's going to be the waddle. That is going to go... <laughs> I can't believe this. Um, like this? <laughs> I don't know. Is that going to go like that? Yeah, kind of like that underneath the chicken's beak. And then this is the comb that goes at the top of the chicken's noggin. So it's going to go like a little mohawk situation. Oh my lord. So cute. So that's what that is. And then right now I'm actually knitting the belly section, like the tummy, and it's used to kind of help close everything up after you stuff it. So that's what I have going right now. Now, again, this is the leftover yarn from my stripe pipe pullover. This is Patton's Classic Wool or Peyton's Classic Wool Worsted. Um, it's a little damp. This is also Peyton's classic wool worsted in their mustard brown color. And then these, this right here is what I used for the beak. This is, uh, excuse me, Knit Picks Swish Worsted. I can't remember. It's, um, it's their Superwash Merino Worsted yarn. I had this for some granny squares that I'm making for a blanket. And I just, it's the perfect color and I figured I could use it for the beak and I didn't have to use very much. So I'm still going to keep this for that granny score project, but that's what I used for that. However, I wanted to recommend something that I also had on hand, but um, it's what I'm using for the red, this right here, this red color. I had a bunch of these little anchor tapestry wool uh, bobbins. These are just little bits of 100% virgin wool that you can pick up on Amazon, but you can also pick it up at Michael's if you're lucky. Sometimes they'll have it at Michael's, um, but it comes in all sorts of different colors. And I had purchased a bunch of these at Michael's a while ago, but they're about a worsted weight, kind of in between a DK and a worsted weight, but it could definitely be used for a worsted weight. I picked up a bunch of these, 100% virgin wool yarn, so it goes really well with this, but it's nice to have on hand if, um, you can kind of see all of that in there. It's nice to have on hand if you're knitting a project like that, little bits of yarn for those little details. So that's what I'm using for that. Yeah, and I love it. Um, what else? Oh, eyeballs. So I wanted blue eyes like you see in the pattern photo. And I went, I figured they were safety eyes. So I went on Amazon and I ordered, I only needed one set for this one chicken. I needed one set of eyes, two eyes. So what do you do? You go on Amazon and you order a, a billion, but that was, the, I couldn't just order like two eyes or even order a small amount. So I just bought a bunch of these safety eyes and I figured um, I'll probably be making more of these because they're so much fun. And I kind of feel like I want to make one for some family members, um, but I have them here in a few different sizes. This pattern calls for 15 millimeter eyes. And so that's what I have, plus a couple of other different sizes. So look at this eyeball. Let's see what this is gonna look like. And there's multiple colors. See all those little colors in there? Yeah. Okay, so let's just see. Oh. at the right spot to put it hold on I'm just gonna pop it in there and we can pretend <laughs> I don't want it to fall out <laughs> that's it look at it oh my gosh it's so cute I love it so much 
Yeah, I can't decide. Like, I really love the blue, but they have these little gold ones as well. Let's try the gold. Hold on. I feel like the gold looks a little too... Well, I don't know. There's... Oh, that's really pretty, though. My mom has this, like, rooster theme going on in her kitchen. Not that... I don't know what you would do with an emotional support chicken in the kitchen, but um, this would be good for that. It kind of has more of, like, a realist, <laughs> realistic vibe, <laughs> if you can call this that. But I think for mine, I definitely really love those blue ones. I don't know what it is about a blue-eyed chicken. Yeah, for sure. And then you get the little comb for the top of the head. Oh my goodness. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so if that wasn't just all the emotional support that you needed today, I don't know what to tell you. But I am so excited about this. Um, it's pretty much, other than that little belly section that I'm knitting right now, I apologize for the plastic crinkling. You'll just have to bear with me. Um, except for that little belly section, this guy's pretty much finished. Of course, I have to weave in some ends here, but then I'm going to stuff this and sew it all together. I ordered from Amazon and I don't know, it's supposed to be here tomorrow. I don't, I can't remember what it is called, but it's an all wool stuffing. Um, I wanted to go with something on the natural side of things instead of that polyfill. Not that I, I have anything against that, which I don't, but I just wanted to kind of try to stick to all wool. The yarn that I'm using is all wool, so I kind of wanted to stick to that. So I ordered by Pobu Fine Wool Stuffing Dehaired Sheep Wool Filler. I mean, it looks like... I'll pop a picture up so you can see it, but kind of looks like that and it's just um it's just filler you can use it to stuff animals and it's wool and so you don't it's not you know it's all el natural if you will so that's what I have for this but that is folks ladies and gentlemen and everyone it is my emotional support chicken hold on okay just as we were talking about this the Amazon guy delivered what I think is that stuffing and I want to share this with you um, like it is freshly delivered and I don't want to, wow, I'm being really risky with how I open this. Oh, hello. It's just right. It's not even in. Okay. Look at that. So the, this is the bag it comes in, just this bag with the label on it. And I'm going to pull a little bit of it out. Yeah, that's wool. All right. Very nice, very soft and squishy. And this should be plenty. I mean, it is like packed in here. This should be plenty for the emotional support chicken. Okay, good. I'm really glad this showed up. Um, I just, I'm patching this in, uh, in this portion of the video because I actually finished recording the entire video. So it's kind of like a mess right here. But as I was wrapping things up, I noticed that my package was waiting for me outside and I wanted to pop back in to share that with you. So yeah, I have all my stuffing for my emotional. Ooh, look at this. For the emotional support chicken, it's ready to go. Can't wait for that. Good news. Well, that is it for me today, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with me, listening to me ramble about these things that I'm working on and my emotional support chicken. It is so lovely to be able to share all of these things with you every week. And I have been really excited to share the emotional support chicken with you. And I can't wait to share it with you when it's all finished and stuffed and a mascot for our Wool Needles Hands community here. I haven't really decided what I want to name it yet. I should have mentioned that earlier. I have a couple of ideas, one of them being Hen Solo. I was also thinking that if we wanted to really keep it to an, like a knitting theme, maybe Elizabeth Zimmer Hen. I don't know, I'm still, I'm still trying to decide. Maybe Cluck Norris. This was, uh, this was delightful. And until we meet again for Wednesday's episode of the Midweek Ramble, happy knitting, happy making, happy whatever it is that you're doing. Take care, be well, and I will see you soon. Bye.